So welcome everybody um, to the program planning webinar for the California Leagues for 2017 to 2019. Um, I'm Helen Hutchison. I'm on there and um, joining me tonight are Trudy Schaefer and Melissa Breach. Joanne Levitt is in Missouri with her family on a well-earned vacation. Um, a few mechanics before we get started. Everyone is muted and we are going to assume that even people who are on their phone can type um, questions into the chat window at the um, bottom of the control box. Um, so if you've got any questions, please go ahead and type them. We're going to try to keep watching for them and answer them when we can. We are recording this and we're going to make the recording and the slides available on the program planning website, which is on the members only website. If you need help getting to that, you can send um, me an email. You can put an email on one of the listservs um, or you can check in with the office in the morning. So, um, hmm. Moving on, the agenda for today is up here, um, and uh, we're going to start with a little bit of introduction and context that I'm going to do. Um, so uh, what is program planning? Program planning is the time in which we do our policy and our position review. Um, it's every other year for the state league. Um, the questions we're looking for, we're looking for answers for from local leagues is what, where, where should the state league focus over the coming two years? And this is our chance for our members, our grassroots to weigh in on where we're going to be putting our energy over the coming two years. The state board will take input from the program planning process from all of the local leagues around the state and develop a recommended program for 2017 and to 2019. And that will come before the convention in June. And then the convention delegates will consider and debate and adopt a program. Um, and program in this sense is our league term and it's for what we are doing in education and advocacy, essentially everything that is not um, direct voter service around elections is program. Um, so I'm, a little bit of context more about program planning and how it fits into all of what we're doing. The ultimate goal is to help focus the league's attention where our members want it to be, um, but also to have real impact on the policies that affect all of us in California. There's a variety of forces that come to play. The one we, we're talking about today, program planning, which where our members tell us where they want us to focus. Um, and, but we also are concerned about opportunity, real opportunities to act and the capacity to do that. So um, I'm going to move on to this. Here's an example from this current year of something where we really, where all these three forces came to bear. Um, the SB 450 is, was known as the um, Vote Center Bill, um, and it, it says that all registered voters would get ballots mailed to them. Those voters then can vote at home and drop off their ballots at a number of places around their county, or they could vote in one of a number of vote centers. Um, those vote centers replace uh, groups of polling places, and they're open more than, than just on Election Day. Um, the, it, so our, um, one of our focus areas for this last two years has been election reform and voting rights. Um, the Secretary of State Padilla and other California officials were really interested in the success of voting centers in Calif in Colorado. Um, and so that sparked interest in wanting to do the same thing here in California. And finally, we have the capacity in, um, in the, particularly in our staff for this bill, where, because we're active members of the Future of California Elections Coalition, or it's known as FOS. Um, and it's where there are a lot, of, a lot of other groups that were also interested in vote centers. So our staff um, used their expertise in voting reforms and engaged with other members of FOS to make sure that SB 450 was 
the way we want it to be, to protect um, voting rights of all Californians, um, that it would enhance voting as a, and not get an impede of anybody's voting um, there. So for us, capacity in includes these partners that we want to be able to work with. So I'm, I'm a little bit more background just so that we know where are the last two years our issues for education and advocacy were money and politics. Um, we combined climate, water, and protecting the environment into one that they those things tended to all run together over the past two years. Um, and then we were just talking about election reform and voting rights. And then we did a really focused thing on minimum and living wage two years ago. Um, um, and th then one final little focus area in um, addition to the priorities set every two years by our members, the state board sets annual priorities that focus particularly on legislation. Um, it's based on our issues for education and advocacy, but also takes into account where we think there's going to be legislative opportunity. For example, for the, in, in the, for the last two years, one of our issues for education and advocacy was money and politics. And we did a lot in 2015 on money and politics, but we went going into 2016, we realized the legislature was, didn't have, was not, really interested in doing much on money and politics. So while we, we may have been doing things otherwise, we were not doing legislative things. So those are our legislative priorities. Um, one, excuse me, one final piece of information here are some dates, and you don't need to write these all down. The slides are going to be available, and um, we're going to hold some webinars that, around all these things. The date that you really need to keep in your mind is February 24th. That is the deadline to submit the program planning input. Um, from there, um, the uh, the, there will be some time to compile all the information from all the different local leagues together. Um, the state board will meet in March to consider and make their recommendation. By mid-April, we should have a recommended program published for local leagues to look at. Um, and that time, we will we will make sure that there's plenty of opportunity to discuss it, whether, you know, I'm sure we'll hold at least one webinar, but there'll be other ways to discuss too, we hope. And finally, our convention in June, 2nd through the 4th, and we're going to be in Sacramento this year, so it will be a fun time. Um, moving on, I'm going to turn this over to Trudy to talk about the details of program planning. We're hoping to save a lot of time for questions, so Trudy's not going to um, go into a huge amount of detail, but she'll give you the basic of what are going on, and then we'll have some time for questions at the end. So over to you, okay, Trudy. Thank you, Helen. All right. And uh, this slide that's showing now, I'm sorry, I've got to, I'm juggling things on my computer. Yeah. These five questions are basically what we hope to cover. And as Helen said, we're going to go very quickly. This is kind of a roadmap for you uh, to tell you where things are and um, how you'll find uh, more information if you haven't yet had a chance to visit these things. Then we hope to leave a lot of time for questions or comments and we think one of the really important things is for you all as uh, the people in uh, the leaders in your local leagues to be able to share with one another what you've been thinking about, what works in terms of how you do your program planning and there's always a lot of interaction as um, various leagues uh, have ideas for what they'd like to suggest in, uh, to, to, in their reports so that the board will take them into consideration as they're working on their recommended program. And so um, that's the, a major part of the reason for this webinar and the reason why we have a listserv, LWVC-program-planning. Um, we'll come back to that. First, uh, what is program planning? And I'll just repeat what Helen said about what program is in league a lingo. It is selected governmental issues chosen by members at the local, state, and national levels for concerted study, education, and action. Um, where do we find information is uh, what the next few slides uh, show. So I think, Helen, why don't you go ahead and advance okay. to the next one? Okay. 
And um, here's a screenshot that isn't all that easy to read, but at least it shows you where we are. And you see up in the upper left-hand corner, lwvc.org slash LWV only. That is the members-only website that has not only program planning, but a lot of other very, very useful information. Um, it's a, a complement to what we have on our public lwvc.org website and our other websites that are more um, our education fund and our election related ones. Uh, not too many people know about it, and that was one major reason for showing and making this screenshot. Uh, because we do hope if you haven't been there and, and uh, nosed around at what's available, that you'll go there very soon and, and see what else is, is um, offered for you. You see the red arrow pointing to program planning kit. So that is clicking on that is one of the major ways you get to um, all the information we have. You may have just clicked on the link inside the email you received about program planning, and that is in also takes you to this next screen. This is the one that has slash prog plan in the uh, URL. Um, and on the left is uh, the message about the whole process. I hope you'll read it again and think about uh, the various options you have. On the right, you see um, reminders of the response uh, date, due date, and then the list of kit materials. We kind of are using the word kit for both this page and the specific program planning kit that you see is uh, the second uh, entry under kit materials. That really tells you, um, we hope, a lot of what you need to know, whether this is the first time you've gotten involved or whether you've done this many times before. And in addition, um, within the kit, there are references to a lot of other documents or web pages, and those are the, uh, what follows in that list under kit materials. I'm going to point out, if you go down to the next blue heading in that page, Program Planning Listserv. That's another um, place where you can get the information about how to get on that listserv. We've actually used it almost year-round when things come up about program, and so it's a good thing to be on and then uh, just see what kind of information you get as mess people send messages through the years. But in particular, um, in the next couple of months, as people are getting uh, their local league information together, getting the input from their members, and wanting to share ideas and questions with other leagues, that's the place to go. Um, Helen, if you'll move on to the next one, the next slide. This is at the top of the document that we call the kit. And uh, in trying to give us, you a sense of what's in that document, we thought this might be a best way to do it. Um, it doesn't fit exactly with uh, where, what we're talking about, but it pretty, it, I, by running through it quickly, I think you'll get a good sense of it. Number one on the left, the explanation about what is program planning and some mention of um, what we're asking you to do, the, the very short summary that Helen gave. Number two is, um, once again, the link to the um, program planning group, the uh, list serves so you can have discussions, resources, questions there, and another link to this uh, webinar. As Helen said, we will post a recording and the, these slides on, on the, um, the page you just saw. Program planning to grow the league is something uh, that I've, we've had up for a couple of years, and when I reread it this year, I was more impressed than ever about uh, the kinds of good advice it gives. So I would, that's a separate document that I think is worth uh, your coming back to. And then there's a sample article we hope you'll put on your web page, um, on your, in your newsletter, um, and various things you can talk about on, on social media so that people are in your, especially in your league, of course, because their, their, their input will uh, decide your report to uh, the state league. But it, this is also a very good opportunity for you to share with the community what the league is all about and have people come and, and learn more. During your me the meetings, um, the couple of notes about setting a welcoming tone, and then what's new for this year's or this biennium's uh, program planning, and finally your meeting agenda. I'm going to come back to those after I skim through the rest. Uh, points to consider as you choose issues for emphasis. We always need some guidelines about how to choose priorities, and that's what's in that section. It's a very important list. After the meeting, we do want a res response form uh, filled out online. Um, don't forget that we do state program planning every other year in preparation for the LWVC convention. We um, it, but, of course, you have an annual meeting every year, and so you have to do pro local program planning, too. And, and many leagues uh, try to combine those in the same meeting. 
um, then come to convention prepared to advocate for what you like and for sharing all the information that we we have in the both from the input that you provide and what the board says uh, is a recommendation. And then finally, there's a section on resources. Um, Helen, I believe, let me see, I may want to ask you to go to the next, uh, go back one, so we can be guided by those questions. Would you do that? Go back to um, the slide yep. that had the five questions. Yep. OK. Um, we've kind of gone through what it is, where do I find information, how do I do program planning? and this is where I do hope that there's a lot of interaction among you all, um, either in this webinar time or at uh, using the listserv, because there's no one best way to do program planning. Some leagues are very involved in program, in um, advocacy, or in educating their communities, and they might want to start out with a general discussion about what they've been doing for the last couple of years and what they know about what the, the state league has been doing. Um, others may need to do a bit more of just a background on what is program, what is program planning, and so forth. And you'll have to figure out what fits your league the most. We hope you won't bog down in that, though, because we're, we hope that there will be a very um, robust discussion of what you really think should be the vision for the League in the next couple of years. One of the documents that's referred to and that uh, is also on the list of, of uh, materials in, in the program planning page, web page, is titled Notes on Ongoing Work and Opportunities. Real sexy name. Uh, it, it's really something that we've not done in this, kind, this manner before, but I think will be very useful for it. What we wanted to do was remind ourselves and everyone that we do have ongoing obligations. And in particular, we're part of a national league that has um, some really um, hefty work ahead of it, of it. We knew that at the National League Convention last June, but uh, the, the challenges have gotten even greater. But at, that, uh, at our convention last June, making democracy work for all was adopted as a major emphasis. And we've thought about what are the, some of the things that we'll need to do in California. That's the first part of this document I'm talking about. Um, voter protection and mobilization, election reform, and then money and politics, redistricting, and uh, issues around constitutional amendments. Some of those things will happen only at the L, uh, state le level as we work in the legislature, for, perhaps. But many of them are things that um, all of us at any level of the league will need to get involved in. So please look at that and remember that that ought to be part of your consideration about how your league will need to spend time, what to spend time. Then on the back of that page, there's um, another list of other issues where We've already been active. We, uh, we may have obligations to move forward. Um, the SB 450 Voters' Choice Act is a good example of that. Um, but there's a, a number of other things. And a couple of those are also areas where, uh, as we talked about ongoing work, we also talked about opportunities. So look at those. They may um, prime your pump for th things you want to talk about. They may at least. Um, give you some of an idea about how much it may already be on the plate at the, at the state level. Um, the what's in and what's out. Uh, before I say what's out, I'm going to say what's in. What we're going to ask you to do is uh, make your league's recommendation for issues for em to emphasize in the next two years. Um, one sidelight is that many of you have are familiar with that as issues for education and advocacy. We thought we'd simplify and go back to the old term, older term, issues for emphasis. We want to know what you think really should be our emphasis, and it does include where should we advocate, where should we educate, um, what exactly should be our focus. Uh, and in the process of looking at that, what we've done is two things. Here's one of the what's out. In previous years, we have asked you to look at every state league position and um, give your input on whether it's still a viable position that should be retained, should it be dropped because it's outdated or even um, not useful anymore, uh, or should it be updated. We've decided that that kind of input is something that you can give us at any time in, um, in your, as you look at things, but it seemed to use up an awful lot of time for local leagues to go through every single position in a very concerted way at maybe one meeting. So we're not asking the, uh, for you to do a report on that. 
if you do think that one of our fo focuses of attention should be updating a position, for example, or studying something new, well, that's what we do want to hear from you as an issue for emphasis. Um, what else is in? The other two questions, in addition to um, in, your, in your report, we'd like to ask about issues for emphasis, um, three, up to three suggestions on that. We also are asking two more questions that fit in with all of this. One of them is about uh, studies and the study process. Do you have suggestions for uh, changes to the league study process that may make it more viable? Um, one suggestion, for example, that has come up is should there be a committee that uh, does really heavy research, as our committees do now, and then should that committee recommend a position for concurrence or rather than going through the process of um, uh, consensus meetings that we have now. There's lots of other options and we would like to hear from you. This is really um, trying to get us all discussing how to make things work better. A second question is about applying league positions. This has come up because we're recognizing that uh, we can't restudy everything, but we have we recognize gaps in some of our positions. And in looking at it, uh, we had a meeting of um, league leaders who, at which it, we noted that mo almost all of our positions have a part that's more uh, talking about the statements of principle on that given issue. And then there are always specifics. Should we be trying to focus more on using those statements of principle and applying those with more weight than some of the details? And you'll see the questions about that. Um, maybe there are some distinctions uh, made between things that we never studied, you know, aspects we didn't cover, versus things where we might have talked about something, but there wasn't a consensus, and maybe now there would be. So please do look at that. Uh, those are the, they should follow your working on your issues for emphasis. And then how do I get help? I've mentioned well, several times now. Uh, the listserv, the, um, uh, this webinar itself, and then we would welcome any emails or uh, questions um, to the office or to, if you write to advocacy at, at lwvc.org, um, you'll get it that will go to several of us and we'll all be, always be sure to get an answer to you as quickly as we can. Helen, is there anything more that we should bring up before we go to questions? Um, um, let's let, let me um, skim down. Um, we talked about structuring your meeting, so you did that. Is that, and then we talked about what's new um, and help there. I'll leave that up. Um, so we're ready to go on to questions. Um, so so suggest people type them in if you've got any more. I, we got one comment. Jane Wander thinks it's great not to have to go through each and every existing position. I'm glad that there's somebody. That's, it's been my least favorite part of program planning. Um, um, I see something from Barbara. Um, and then uh, other local Barbara is pointing out that some local leagues have people in have people that can help understand the different parts of of the study process. But if if you don't, you know, you can a ask about it, and we'll try to help. Um, I'll chime in that that uh, we've, because we've had recent studies that have been quite thorough and quite extensive in their study mm -hmm. committees. That yes, there would be people um, in a lot of different leagues, and. Uh, Certainly, there we've had studies of the study process, if you will, uh, at least examinations of it, and that is something that uh, we can um, guide you to if you have questions. But I really think discussion is a good place for that too. Okay, um, Diz is asking, where do we find the notes on ongoing work and opportunities? Go back to about slide. What would that be? Thirteen, maybe. <laughs> Let's see. It's on the um, program planning page of the members only website. Oh, went, too, uh, went too far. So notes on ongoing work and opportunity. It's right in the middle of the page. Come, if you can see my air, I don't know if you can see me, my arrow on the screen, but so on the programming planning program planning web page, there is a link that will download that document for you. Okay. 
Um, I see another thing. Thanks for streamlining the position <laughs> review. <laughs> I yeah. think that's going to be popular. Um, Fos said, oh. Wanda's asking about local leagues participating in the conference in March. Trudy and Melissa, I'm assuming local league members can can attend, right? Yeah, the March conference um, will be in uh, Los Angeles, um, and we will definitely get material out as soon as we have registration information. Um, I think I, we traditionally have had a good turnout of league members for the annual conference. Um, I thought of something I didn't mention. I skimmed through or passed the fact that we're asking you to do your report to um, the LWVC as an uh, online. As we're, we've got a Survey Monkey report form set up. And if there's anybody who needs help using that, we are more than anxious to help you. Um, it just makes it so much easier for us to compile uh, answers and uh, get that all put together before the board meeting. Um, but one thing that is there, and let's see, Helen, if you can bring your arrow uh, over to the, there again, you see where it says response form online survey. That's a, a link to the SurveyMonkey um, report form. Then right below it, planning meeting form, that is a PDF that we we basically made the report form into a PDF because we thought there may be people who'd like that for the sake of taking notes during their meeting, whatever kind of planning you're doing. Um, and so it's not something we are asking you to send in. And in fact, if you send it in, we'll, we'll have to tell you, oh, please go back to SurveyMonkey. But it may be useful to you, and we think it uh, might be a nice aid. In many leagues, um, uh, program planning is done by the various units. Some leagues are divided into the unit meeting units that meet um, maybe all the, all of the same week, things like that. What we need is a report from your entire league. So if you're dividing things up and you have um, separate units, they might want to use that paper form and then um, someone who's in charge of program planning overall for your league will, will combine those results make a recommendation to the, your local league board, and the board will de decide on what the overall league's uh, response should be. Okay. Any other, let's see, more questions? I don't see any more questions. Let's see, I see something there. What is, um, oh. Oh. oh, maybe it's. Yeah, there is information on program content that appeals across generations. Well, of course, right now, I think all generations are concerned about what's going to be happening at the federal level and how uh, it will affect California in the next two years. And so it may be that just by highlighting those sorts of challenges, you will be able to be speak to speak to all the generations. Um, but other thoughts? So I would I would just add in that I think one of the opportunities here, if you if you have the opportunity to include young people in your program planning meetings, um, rather than try to, uh, I mean I think we're doing work at the state level to try and make sure that the the work of the state league is resonant with um, with all of our our citizens. Um, but if you're doing the work on the ground with your in your own community, for you to be able to push that that feedback back up through to us. Through the through the program planning process, I think has has real value. So I would encourage you, if you if you can, if you're concerned about kind of the rep representation of young people in the in our work, to to um, help us by trying to engage them in the discussion, so that that feedback gets finds its way into the results of the program planning. Yeah, I, I just add one note, and that is that the state board met just a couple, a week and a half ago now. And one of the things that we recognized going into the next year is that we are going to have our list of where we think we're going to be acting statewide. But we also know that we may have to drop things if suddenly um, immigration becomes a, a really important issue in the state or um, health, access to health care. Um, sanctuary cities, sanctuary states. That, so we may, we recognize that, that there may be challenges and we may need to switch our focus um, based on urgency of issues. 
I don't know that that, that and that to me appeals across all age groups. But um, that any, I, I agree that any feedback you can give us about how you think we can best do that would be great. Um, Helen, I'm seeing a lot of questions. Do you want me to read some of them out? Sure. Um, uh, let's see. Sorry, let me go up to the to the bottom because these are in reverse order. Um, let's see. There's something here about um, specifically private management of tax-supported institutions and charter schools from Bonnie. Um, I think, the, oh, the, she, it was broken in too. I'm sorry. Yeah. Has the league exhausted the topic? of insisting upon transparency and accountability for public tax supporting institutions, oh. um, specifically private management of tax supported institutions. Um, I think that that is an ongoing, my personal feeling is that that's an ongoing issue and that we can never exhaust that topic. Um, I live in Oakland where that is kind of the number one issue for our league. We, we tend to be the public transparency people that are always pounding that tambourine that drum. Um, Trudy, do you have anything to add? No, I, I think you've said it very well. I, you know, we, we, have, we need more discussion of where we are on things, but um, I think that leagues like Oakland that have been dealing with that in particular will be very helpful to us. Okay. Um, um, there's a question from Wanda, um, Wanda about um, the fact that, that um, San Diego was um, an ex uh, one of the experimental ones that offered voting centers in the November election and asking about providing us with the um, the uh, the election official report. Um, I believe we have that. Um, Trudy, is that correct or should we ask Wanda to send that to us? Um, actually, well, maybe Wanda, why don't we get on the phone together? It's Orange County, right? And that's Neil Kelly? Or am I wrong and you're talking about the San Diego um, pilot that's never happened because you haven't had a special election? Oh, it's orange. Okay. Yeah. There, it must we, yeah, through FOS, um, uh, Neil Kelly is one of the registrars of voters who is an active member of the, uh, the group that um, uh, talk regularly on FOS. And so that's a good example of why it's been great that we have these connections and we've learned a lot and we've been able to contribute a lot. And we are looking to a significant league role in um, helping with the implementation of SB 450. So yes, let's talk. Yeah. Um, and and we're, we're talking about that for um, counties beyond. It's the counties, that, the first county rollout counties, I'm not even, I, I don't remember the list, but we're, we're going to ask for local league help in that process of, what, of monitoring that rollout. Um, There's a question here from Marilee. Okay. Um, would you please expand on, on Section C of the response form, applying league positions? Should there be a distinction between issues that previous studies did not cover and issues that were studied but on which no consensus was found? So I think she's asking, we, we touched on that briefly, I think she's asking yeah. for more information about what we met. Well, and Diz um, asks somewhat the same question about ideas about how we apply league positions. Um, and. So I would say that we, we don't have any suggestions. We're asking, we're, this is one where we're really asking for input. We have in the past, when we have gone to apply a position, used the detailed section. So for instance, we have no position on revenue bonds. And um, I guess those were the two examples. We have no position on revenue bonds. So we did not speak to um, whatever the proposition was on the, November ballot. 53. Yeah, 53 on revenue bonds. Um, and we had no consensus on the position on um, sales, sales tax on services. Um, and yet, if you look at the principles, we could have used our principles to, to act on either of those two issues. Um, and I think it's good to distinguish between the two. Um, and and give us feedback. Do you, does it does it matter? And and in how we do that, can we be broader and just use the principles, um, or do we really need to to focus on the details of what the position is and what the, what the position did and did not cover? 
and that it, you know maybe uh, people can make suggestions as to some kind of criteria um, or what would be your your basis for deciding uh, individual cases. And I would like to also add that uh, Helen's two examples are from our state and local finances position. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions could be whether we need to do some sort of a very, and it could be a, a short maybe, um, update study of that, of some particular state and local finances issues. Maybe that's not something anybody would want to do, but it has come up and that's one of those kinds of things that you might consider. Okay. Are there other questions? Um, Wanda says she definitely wants to see immigration issues studied and publicized. Wanda, we have studied it. We have a national position on it. And so um, we do expect, we hope not to have to work on it. Um, but we are prepared and we and Lee Lawrence, um, who is off board government director, is is really gearing up with Melissa um, to to work on immigration issues for us. So uh, Susan uh, had a good uh, maybe it's Suzanne. Yeah. Okay. Um, it seems important to build collaborative efforts as part of advocacy of critical LWV principles. Does California LWV have groups that make strong collaborations for pursuing program goals in common? Um, and the example she gives is AAUW and religious organizations, but Trudy, do you want to talk about the organizations that were, that are our closest um, programmatic partners? Mm -hmm. and, and I think there might be two parts to our thinking here. One is that we do have very strong collaborations um, that are, we have found very helpful. One of them, uh, you've now heard m multiple times, is the future of California elections. Uh, and within that, we've worked a lot on voter registration um, at the DMV, for example, with the ACLU and, and on other issues with them. Um, We've uh, common cause on money and politics and CalPERG. Uh, another, uh, let's see, what are some of our other um, the other groups within there? As I, I mentioned, um, one of the registrars of voters and just having very close um, free re uh, interaction with registrars is one of the strengths of that group. Um, we're also in networks like Green California, um, which you can guess is a, a network of, of a large number of environmental groups. We're not um, as active in all of the topics that are covered by that network, so in, it's not one of the strongest of our connections, but in certain areas it's been a very strong one. Um, let's see, Helen or Melissa, do you want to suggest any other uh, groups that we've been doing a lot with lately? Uh, and then there's within the league, where do we have um, well, uh, networking and re regional groups? So you've got the advocacy groups. I think there's a number of other groups we work with on voter service kinds of things. And Melissa, maybe you can help oh, me remember what they are. Well, there's almost too many of them. Yeah. Um, to, to name, but I think even within Future of California elections, there's organizations like Naleo and Maldef and Asians Americans Advancing okay. Justice and um, and Rock the Vote and just um, you know those are the the list that we're kind of giving where the we're one of the founding members of FOS and those are kind of the other founders. Um, we obviously work really closely with Maplight um, on voter service. Um, we're working with uh, Common Knowledge and a whole host of other. Um, host of yeah. other groups, but I think from an advocacy perspective, um, it's almost, I, I'm, I'm almost shocked by the by the, the amount of energy and time and, and work that goes into sustaining relationships. I mean, it's totally worthwhile, it's absolutely critical, but everything, even around things that are, um, that are long-term commitments of ours, but maybe we're not as, as, a, as much of a priority in California right now, like um, reproductive justice or, or, or repro you know, sorry, reproductive health and access. Right. But, um, uh, and, and there's make it fair around Prop 13. Yes, which is coming back up. Um, so uh, Bonnie asks about a position on non-citizen, so parents and guardians voting in local school board elections. Um, it passed in San Francisco as a pilot program. And this came up, and I don't remember, Trudy, do you remember what we said on that one? I believe that. I'm having the same view, uh, racking my brain. I believe that we found that there wasn't a good answer, that we that we don't have um, guidance from state or even national league positions on that. 
so um, it is something maybe we'll consult again with the National League to see if they have a sense around around the country what other what various leagues are doing. But it is something we don't have a good sense of yet. I think. However, I'd say once it's passed, then it becomes part of making the community stronger. And so I think we would be whole. Mm -hmm. That we'd want to make sure that it was implemented well and that everybody got good information and understood what their rights were and what their rights, you know, what they can and can't do. So, um, because we do, I mean, we do talk about our communities being a lot stronger when more people participate. And so I'd, I'd say we want to really make sure that, that whatever, that, that it does happen well and that everybody, everybody gets a chance to have their voice heard. Um, yeah. I think this is a, a conversation too that that national is probably going to have. We will probably get to have a national pretty pretty soon. Um, um, yeah. It's not just California that's looking at these these measures. So um, Susan asks if lists of groups with, with whom we've collaborated. Do we have anything on the websites about all of the groups we work with? We probably don't. I think that's true. We've we've had a that kind of a, a, a list in the past, but pretty far in the past, so we, that's, yeah. uh, we'll put it on our to-do list. Okay. Um, and Barbara had asked as a side question about um, sanctuary cities, and do we have a position on sanctuary cities? We don't have a position specifically speaking to sanctuary cities or schools, but we do, our immigration position talks about protecting people um, and making sure that they are not mistreated. And um, I think that we have been, some local leagues have used that to support um, proclamations in their cities to be sanctuary cities. Um, so I do think, I, I mean, and the, the, but Trudy and Lee Lawrence are the two people that you need to consult with to make sure that whatever is in anything locally that would fit within the league position and they can tell you about precedent. Um, anything else on that, Trudy? Uh, no, I think that's really kind of where we are. We do have the advantage of a national president who was on the National League Study Committee at the time of when we studied immigration issues. Um, and we have a, a well-stated national position, but the you know, the how to apply it is not always going to be easy because there are these issues that probably weren't such a, um, a consideration back then. We did support a couple of immigration related bills in the, uh, the session that just ended. One um, that went to the governor was signed and one that was vetoed. And uh, we, we, I think there are evidence that our position lets us do a certain amount of activity, but we, we do have more work to do on, on interpretation. Yeah. Um, Wanda asks about local redistricting. We definitely, um, Want if if want to help local leagues and support local leagues in working on local redistricting, we will be collaborating with Common Cause on that. Um, we're putting together a toolkit on public financing, and Common Cause is putting together a toolkit on local redistricting. But we so, but the both of those things we will we want to work collaboratively with your local Common Cause people. Um, and so we definitely, if you, if you are interested in either or, I mean both, um, doing some kind of um, changing the way redistricting is done locally for your city or your school district or your county, um, or you want to work on public financing, please let us know. We want to get the, we, you know, we really want to get started with you and we've got support for that. An interesting uh, sidelight of that is that last year was a very busy year in the legislature. Um, to a large extent, it was in uh, the governmental issues, especially money and um, voting, voting rights, elections, and the voting, uh, excuse me, voting rights, and also money and politics. Um, there was a, our final so, uh, success in climate change too. But uh, this year there's a lot of work that's just going to be 
implementation. And I think that's an exciting place for us to be, where there will be activities available to local leagues and things that need to be done at the state level. Might not be as big a, a um, year, at least on those topics, in the legislature, uh, but still a very active year. All right. Um, so some suggestions about how we could word it, um, a list of of or other organizations so we make sure that we don't look like we're endorsing everything they do um, and um, yeah what Wanda the redistricting is in 2020 but you need if you want to have some new means of doing it you need we need to get you need to get started now so that you're ready for 2020 when the redistricting happen when it's time to do it because the census is 2020 um, I, oh, more questions. Um, do we have any idea what the focus in the legislature is going to be? Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of um, proposals that are trying to, to um, establish what California has in, in law that uh, may not be the same as what happens in Congress. Immigration has certainly come up right away, and we're kind of in a very much of a wait and see mode for things like um, uh, voting, voting rights, elections, uh, the kinds of, of voter suppression proposals that have been in other places in the country. And will those become? Um, will there be proposals to apply them nationally? And in the same way, people are concerned about what will happen in, with environmental protections and. There may be um, ways in which people will propose to codify California's situation, put things into statute that had been where we had been relying on federal laws. Uh, but I, I don't think I have a better answer than that yet. So we're watching. Uh, Helen, do you think it? Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you think it's um, like one of the one of the things that that you know we've talked about is this idea that. There's just so many unknowns right now that it's important that the that the state league mm -hmm. maintain um, maintain enough capacity to be to address opportunities and threats as they arrive. Definitely, right? So that we can't we really can't plan every every minute for the next two years and and overcommit because we don't know what could come in that's much more urgent and could could read could require that we redirect um, resources. So um, I think this is an opportunity you know, from our end, we're we're thinking about this as, what do we want to do, and how do we how do we maintain a, a healthy amount of flexibility while moving forward? Right, right. Well, and and I think we can go ahead and make a list of all the things that we want to do and recognize that things may drop off because right. something more urgent comes in. Um, there's a question about do we have the what's in and what's out on the web? They are in the kit. Mm -hmm. Is it formally listed or is it scattered throughout? But I think there's a what's new section in there, isn't there? Trina? There is a what's new section. I just okay. just put down my copy of the kit. I have a printout. Okay. But uh, it, it's there and it's pretty closely um, put together. Yeah, what's new and then following that is your meeting agenda and um, the questions about the study process and applying our positions are within that. So. Do we have positions on voter information related to false news, the party segmented cable news, inaccurate social media content, racist, homophobic kind of communications? Um, do We don't have positions that do directly relate to those, but we certainly have positions from which I think that we have a we can say that, be, that vote, we want voters to have accurate and complete information. Um, and therefore, we can talk about what is inaccurate or incomplete about what people are seeing and why it's important to have complete information and accurate information, how to find it, how to identify what's not. And along those lines, I think this is the kind of thing that if any one of you and your league develop something good, it would be wonderful if you share it with all, all of us. Um, because I think we're all going to be looking for ways that those sorts of answers are stated. And you know, and um, having, having a template from someone else may really be the, a good beginning for any of us. Yeah. Um, 
Jane points out that the California Voting Rights um, Act, which um, at, forces cities to use election by district, um, has has the enforcement of that has been increasing, um, and we may need to continue that. And um, when that has happened locally, the league has. Um, tried to be part of the actions that, that are part of that moving to district elections. Um, I think we need to do, a, there are some places where we need to do some member education, but there's a lot of community education about that one. Um, and we did support a couple of bills that Pat were signed this last year that um, streamlined this the move to districts uh, in, in a city that um, or a special district that has um, been forced to go to uh, to districts because evidence of discrimination has been has been brought forward. One of the things I would suggest is, uh, as you're monitoring that kind of thing, um, the minute uh, your local um, community uh, accepts that it has to go to districts, suggest that the, that those districts should be set up. Uh, established by a, an independent redistricting commission, not by the same governing body that uh, was happy with the status quo before. Right. Uh, that's a good point. And, and we have models for how that can happen. You don't need to come up with it all on your own. So if if there's something that like that that's happening, do um, ask for help because we've got stuff from from other, other places that we can just adapt for you. Um, Susan points out that the question about groups with whom we've collaborated is so that we can help local leagues think of groups with whom you they may want to work, um, and I think that's that would be that is absolutely right. Um, we also know that um, Make It Fair, which is the group that we had been working on Prop 13 reform and is it kind of went quiet through the election cycle is now reforming and we think that there's going to be a lot of opportunities for local leagues to work with that. So if you have people in your league who want to work on that, um, put them in touch with Trudy or me or Elizabeth Ralston who is in the Los Angeles League is, is representing us on that um, coalition. Um, any of us can help put you in touch with the groups in your community that are that are active on in this issue. So, yeah. can I can I just add that if you have this is a, probably one of the favorite things that the state league likes to do, yeah. which is to connect people with resources and relationships we have. So if you are, want to do a project or you're interested in something, whether it be a voter service project or an education project or or something around advocacy, um, do not hesitate to post to one of the the boards or to give a call to the office and just say. Um, you know, we're thinking about who we could include. Are there people that you that helpful to us? Because we're always happy to make those introductions. Um, on, you know, as long as we have those relationships to, to leverage. Um, I see another comment from Susan Guilford. I well, the little box in which the questions go is so tiny. No, no Susan, <laughs> already, so, uh, I've, I'll, I've okay. got I've got it open. So Susan's question we just answered. Um, the next question was from Barbara, and it's um, oh, so Barbara's talking about Santa Monica's um, uh, issue with their districts and their city council and Santa Monica opposition, but that's something that can be discussed offline. Yeah. She says, um, okay. absolutely agree with Trudy on Helen on this. Jane Wanderer. Bring back, make it fair, Jane Wonder. Yeah. I think that's everything. Yeah, make it fair is is coming back, um, Jane. We they had its first meeting last week to reorganize and re re-energize. Oh, okay. Well, no more questions, and and we're almost up with our hours. So thank you all um, for coming. I'm going to stop recording, and then. Um,